Now, if any of y'all have never caught a fish on a dry damselfly pattern, put that on your bucket list because it can be a lot of fun. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So earlier this week, I was looking through my terrestrial boxes, doing an inventory, seeing what patterns I needed to tie for this summer, and I realized I didn't have a whole lot of damselflies. Now I know damselflies, they're not terrestrial, they're actually aquatic bugs, they come from nymphs, but I keep them in my terrestrial box because they're kind of big and you know I fish them in the summer when, when it's hopper season anyway. So I realized I needed to tie a few up and I started flipping through my books and I found a great pattern for them in David Klausmeyer's Favorite Flies. Now there are a lot of different damselfly dry fly patterns out there and I've tied four or five of them and I, there are several that I use but the one in this book I think he came up with pretty much the easiest one to tie out there. Now I am going to tie it with an extended body foam that you have to make you know using the needle and I'll show you that technique here in just a minute. But aside from that, it's a super easy pattern. And one thing I do want to say is, you know, tie these in whatever color the bugs are in your area and whatever size. I know here in Maryland, we've got a blue and green, almost a metallic looking damselfly. And then we've got a black and white one that's mostly white. And I'll tie that one with a white foam and then just take a black marker and put some spots on it. And what I really like about this Klausmeyer version of this pattern is the wing. Some of the ones I've tied in the past, I would use a feathers for the wing, kind of as, as a spent wing, but they don't always fish that well. And these big hair wing ones, if you don't tie them right, sometimes they're just going to corkscrew through the air and make a big mess of your line. So his pattern uses a synthetic for a wing, either a, uh, an acrylic or nylon or polypropylene or antron or xelon, anything like that in a white. I think it's going to look pretty good and it's a lot easier to tie and I think it's going to fish a lot easier. So it's a pretty cool pattern and I think it was fun to tie. I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, in the vise, David Klausmeyer's foam damselfly. Now I think the coolest thing about this pattern are those wings. I mean the extended body, yeah that's nice, but those wings are what's really gonna make this thing effective. But before we get to them, we do have to make this extended body. So I'm gonna put a needle in here. Let's push that back in there. Okay, that'll work. And that one I just did was a single layer of foam. Uh, you can certainly do it with a single layer, or you can do it with two. And I'm going to do two. I think it looks just a little bit better. But with one layer, it's a little easier. So I put a little wax on there. It, it does help to, I would say, you know, slide it off. So I'm cutting a piece of foam and pretty thin. Not real thick for this size 12. I'm keeping it pretty thin and I'm just going to poke it somewhere right in the middle. There we go, take that down. Probably should have put the wax on after that because I just slid a lot of it off there. Now I'm gonna catch some black thread in. Pull a good bit out, I'm not putting it tight. Don't wanna put real tight wraps right here. Um, you want it to be enough wraps that it you know, you, your thread won't come unwound on you, but at the same time, you don't want to really bind anything to this hook right here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is fold it over, but then kind of go up and back to, to judge how, how wide you want that back body segment to be. So let's try it right there. I'm gonna do just a, a loose wrap, two loose wraps right here. Okay, I think that's about how big a piece I want right there. So I'm gonna put another wrap, and that's this one's kinda tight, but you can make it a little bit tighter than you might think when you're wrapping around this foam. So then advance your thread up a little bit, and we're gonna do the same thing again right here. We'll do two wraps, neither of them too tight yet, and just take a look at it. Okay, I think that's about the, the width of that segment I want. Now I'm going to take this thread up here, advance it forward again, and then just repeat this until I get to the end of this needle.
Okay, I think that's gonna be enough of a body. Let's go ahead and do a whip finish right there where that last segment is. You can cut one of these pieces off short. We're not gonna need it, but don't cut the other one off too short. That's what we're gonna to use to tie it onto the hook. But going ahead and cutting them now gives you a little bit of room to do your whip finish right there. Now the whole thing should just slide off pretty easily. Just grab the whole piece right there with a couple fingers, and there you go. And what I will do, I will make several of these at one time and then go on to tying them. So when you're ready to tie, just swap that needle out for a hook. This is a size 12 standard length barbless dry fly hook. And this is what Klaus Meyer says he ties them on. Uh, depending on the bugs in your area, your water, you could go a lot bigger or you can stick with this size. I'm gonna go with size 12, but some of the bugs here in Maryland do get a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and catch our thread in toward the back here. Now I've got my segmented body right here and you see I snipped off the bottom piece of foam and I'm gonna catch it in with this top piece right here. Now there's one trick you can do if you don't have a bend or you know an angle like you want, you can take a lighter and then just real quickly heat one side and it will cause it to contract a little bit and then naturally bend. I would show you that right here, but I would probably mess this up and then end up getting to start the video all over. So I'm just going to catch it in right here and call this one cool enough. Okay, so there we go. That's a good enough angle, I think, right there. And I'm going to put some loose wraps right here just to bind this in. Maybe I should have snipped it off so I don't get too far up forward. Yeah, let's do that right there. But now I'm gonna put some tight wraps to just really lock this in so this foam isn't gonna spin around anymore on me. Now we do have some legs and a thorax made of hackle, but we're gonna catch in the, the hackle first. So let's see. Probably not a whole lot bigger than the hook gap, so I think right there is gonna work. Let's go ahead and create a little catch in point for this feather right here. And I'm gonna catch this in right back here at the front of this extended body. Okay, that's gonna work right there. I'm gonna have a little stem to take care of. And now we're gonna hackle this thorax area. So just put a little wax on, and Klaus Meyer does call for a blue dubbing. If you don't have blue, and I know it's not a real common color, I'd just go with some gray or light gray. This is straight up blue yarn put in my coffee grinder, so it wasn't that hard to come by. But I'm just gonna put it on here, not real thick. It's just gonna be a thorax that, you know, it might show under this Palmer Grizzly hackle we're gonna wrap up in just a second. All right, we don't want to get it too far up because we do have a, a wing up here, and the wing is just white antron or zeline or parapost, just some kind of synthetic fibers. This is one strand right here, and I'm going to catch it in right up front. Let me create a little flatter spot for it right there. And I'm tying this in before I wrap this hackle because I can then use the hackle to help me position this if I, if I need to. So I'm going to catch it in with a few X wraps right here. Okay, now that's a lot longer than I'm going to need, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim it, not necessarily to size, but just a little bit shorter to keep it out of my way. All right, let's do a few more wraps right here to just really lock this in. And there's one more trick we're going to do with this pair post that I think is is interesting and I you know first learned about it reading it in Klaus Meyer's book okay so we've got our thread up in front of that wing now we're just going to palmer this up not a whole lot of wraps four or five I guess is probably plenty but then when we get up here to the wing we can kind of use this hackle to help push our wing into place if we need to
Okay, three or four wraps behind it, maybe five, I guess, and then one or so in front is going to be su sufficient. So let's catch that off and then snip this excess. Okay, the wing is coming off pretty much what I want right there. Let's temporarily pull these back and then lay a little flat area here so we can get a whip finish in. Did y'all see that? My thread broke when I was pulling it tight. I think we're gonna be fine though. Okay, for the wing, let's first trim it to size. And I think that this side right here is just a little bit too long. Let's try that. Okay, I think that's it right there. Now the trick Klausmeyer mentioned in his book was use some head cement or UV resin or any kind of varnish right here. Now this step is something I would do after I've tied all of these that I'm gonna tie. Say I'm gonna make four or five of them. I would have go, gone ahead and made all of them before I do this. So what you can do, you can just put either a, a drop of this resin on your finger right here. See that right there? And then just try not to get it on your hackle fibers, but probably not a big deal if you do. Or you can just take your bodkin Put a little drop on it right there. Let's try it again on this side, the front half. And I'm just going to just pull this out right here. And what I'm effectively doing is just putting, spreading some of this UV resin through those wings right there. Now we put the torch on it for 15 or 20 seconds and it's really gonna firm them up and make them kind of stiff. And we'll do a little trimming after we've, you know, dried them up pretty good right here. So if you need to, just now's the time to go ahead and either cut it down to size or if you've got any, you know, rogue fibers coming out right there, just do that. But after this dries like this, this wing, it will be a lot stiffer than it was before. And it's going to pretty much maintain that 90 degree, you know, sticking out from the hook. So there you go, quite a simple little damselfly pattern. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.